Is it better to build yourself a DIY custom off-grid power system or purchase a pre-made portable power station like this GrowWatt Infinity 1500? In this video, I'm going to explain why the answer isn't always as obvious as you might think, what are the advantages and disadvantages of each option, and which one is best for your use case in the long run. For those of you that are new here, I'm Ben and welcome to Combi Life. Please consider subscribing to the best van life and adventure content on YouTube. I've been living the van life for over 10 years and I've been relying heavily on off-grid electrical systems to power my nomadic lifestyle all over the planet. Four years ago, I built an incredibly powerful off-grid power system and more recently, I've been testing a number of portable power systems. A lot of my subscribers have been asking whether a portable power system is now the best option and today we will find out. We'll discuss building an off-grid power system in a moment but for now let's discuss the portable power system here i've got a grow watt infinity 1500 and grow Watt have kindly provided this unit for testing for us to make this video so thanks to those guys the benefits of a portable power system are portability simplicity flexibility and cost yep cost electrical systems are one of the most expensive parts of building a van but a portable power system is actually surprisingly cost effective and in a moment we're going to compare the costs of building a diy system versus a portable power system and i think it's going to surprise you because it certainly surprised me before we go for a walk before we look at the grow Watt infinity 1500 in more detail who exactly is a portable power station good for well anyone who wants to add an off-grid power system to a vehicle but doesn't want to deal with the complexity of designing and installing and building their own custom off-grid power system also anyone who doesn't want to tie up all of their investment into one vehicle and wants the benefits to be able to take their power system to a tent or a, the back garden or a fishing boat or any other location the fact that these portable power stations are by the very nature portable is obviously one of the key benefits it's also why a lot of people will add one of these to an existing power system because perhaps they want to expand the capacity of their power system but they want to do it in a more flexible and convenient way a portable power station is also a great option for people that want to add a redundancy option for their homes in case they, there is a blackout and perhaps they want to power the fridge and freezer so they don't lose all their food something like this will very quickly pay for itself the grow Watt infinity 1500 has 1512 watt hours of lithium ion batteries which is right in the sweet spot for van life that's just the kind of amount of capacity that the majority of people are going to want and you can link three of these devices together to create an even bigger capacity which I haven't done and I haven't tried because we only have one for what it's worth four years ago I upgraded to lithium-ion batteries and it's been an absolute game changer I would highly recommend you fork out the extra money for lithium batteries not only can you use more of the capacity significantly more but you can also recharge so much faster it absolutely makes a massive difference to life on the road and speaking of recharging like most portable power systems they can be recharged in three ways the primary way is via an ac outlet from a campsite or something like that or from your home it can recharge from zero to 80 percent in one hour which is up there with the fastest possible out of all of the power stations it has a bi-directional inverter so it's actually really really fast and compact so that's a really good feature that makes a big difference being able to recharge it quickly because you don't want to be hanging around waiting for it to recharge when you should be out having an adventure the second option to recharge is via solar you can actually use any solar solar panels with MC4 connections. So that's really good that you're not tied into a specific brand's solar panels and it can recharge up to 800 watts of solar, which is actually a lot of panels and theoretically recharge the entire power station in two and a half hours, which is ridiculously rapid. And the third option, like most portable power stations, is the 12 volt socket, which you can be plugged into your accessory socket on your vehicle and you can recharge whilst you're driving, which is really, really sweet to have. We'll come back to that in a moment. Once you've done recharging, you've got 12 different ports to be able to take power back out of the battery. The AC power is up to 2000 watts and it's a pure sine wave inverter which is the highest quality type of inverter that you want to have in your power station. 2000 watts is enough to power the vast majority of domestic appliances that you're likely to have. It's actually more than sufficient and is double what I've chosen to have in my camper van. For your smaller devices, it has six USB charging ports, including two fast charge ports and two USB-C ports, as well as a 12 volt socket on the side and wait for it, wireless charging on the top. How many more devices can I plug in and do the wireless? 
that's actually really handy to have. I'm really happy to see the wireless charging. I really like that and I've used that feature a lot. Other features worthy of note is the display on the Infinity 1500 because it is one of the best ones that I've seen, but it also has a really good smart app so you can control it remotely from your phone, which is actually really useful. You can turn it on and off, see the remaining charge in terms of the number of hours you have left at your current draw, how much input you're getting from your charging and how much output draw is happening. The smart app is really handy in case you want to be able to store your portable power station out of sight, which is actually quite likely. You don't always want to have to be able to press the buttons and access the thing. You can do it all from your phone. Very, very handy. Overall, it's well built and at 16.5 kilos or 36 pounds roughly, it's actually one of the lightest and smallest footprint portable power stations that I've seen for the amount of capacity it has. So that is actually really impressive. There's a link in the description if you want to check out the current price. In fact, let me just pause the video whilst you do that. As you can see, it is very reasonably priced, but there are some advantages to building your own power system. But first, let's look at the disadvantages. One of the biggest downsides is it takes up a lot more space. All of these individual items have their own packaging and casing and um, cables running, and it just takes up a lot more space. Also, that's not portable at all. It's tied to this vehicle. Now I could potentially remove some of these expensive components if I were to sell this vehicle, but in reality, they're all wired in. Um, it's gonna leave a horrible mess for the next person. It's not gonna make the vehicle very saleable. Um, so no, it's not portable. This stuff is staying in the vehicle and it's way more complex. This allows me to charge from the AC hookup. This allows me to charge from the alternator. This is important. We're gonna come back to this. This allows me to charge from the solar. Keep in mind, these two devices are basically half the size and capacity as what's inside the GrowWatt Infinity 1500, giving half the charging power. You'll need to calculate the correct power for all of these devices. You need to calculate the correct breaker size, the correct fuse sizes, the correct gauge for all of the different cablings inside, thin cable thick cable. You need to understand DC systems and AC systems. Hmm. There's a lot that goes into this. It's quite a steep learning curve. It's actually really fun once you get into it. And if you're interested in doing that kind of thing, it is a good project and you it can be quite rewarding and you can get a system that's built exactly to the specifications and needs that you want. If you're interested in learning, I do have a complete guide and how to step-by-step -step process and diagrams and everything that you can download from my website. I will link it up here somewhere. But it's cheaper to build your own system, right? Well, that's what a lot of people would assume, I think. Um, well, I've actually got the costs here. I just looked up the costs uh, in today's money, how much all of the different components that I have put in my DIY system that are in this, more or less, in this power system. And uh, this is gonna surprise you. Let's have a look at the prices. The DC to DC battery to battery charger I have, which charges for my alternator is $535. The global smart charger, which is what I use to get power from an AC socket is $852. The solar charge controller is $226. The battery monitor is $206. And the equivalent amount of lithium batteries that I have that are in here are $1,101. I'm gonna stop there because that's basically over $2,900 already. It's already more than 125%, more than the GrowWatt Infinity 1500. And I haven't even taken into account the breakers, the cables, and all of the other little bits and pieces and accessories that you need to build your off-grid power system. This is obviously much more cost effective. Now I will say you can obviously find cheaper brands than the one I used in my custom system. However, I think we're kind of getting the point that it's actually quite difficult to build your own system in a more cost effective manner than purchasing a pre-made one. However, there are some benefits that you may want to consider. Having a modular design with individual components gives you some additional redundancy. So if for example, and this has happened to me, a certain charging feature broke, it doesn't disable your entire system. Obviously, if your batteries break, you're still gonna have your whole system disabled. For people that are rove landing and going really far off grid, having that redundancy is something that we look to put in our vehicles. But that may be why you want to get two portable power systems and daisy chain them together to have double the capacity and double the redundancy. So think about that. The other reason you may want to consider building your own custom system is because you can put in higher vehicle charging. For example, the GrowWatt Infinity 1500, like all portable power stations, recharges on the move very, very 
conveniently from the 12 volt socket in your vehicle. However, that is limited to 120 watts, which is not very much. Um, Grow Watt actually have got the amount of recharge time here. So it's 12 hours for a, re a full recharge from your 12 volt socket from your vehicle as you're moving. My system can recharge in two and a half hours. And that is actually really useful because it's, it's one of the ways that I rely on to recharge my battery is whilst I'm driving between locations, particularly on long days. Um, that is not a limitation of this power system. That's a limitation of the 12 volt sockets that are used. For my particular use case, that's important and it might be for you. In conclusion, DIY custom power systems are a better option if you are likely to have a large power system and you're gonna be stringing multiple lithium ion batteries together, then you can benefit from the economies of scale and that would be a better option. It's also a better option if you have high power requirements, i.e. you might need a, an inverter which is larger than 2000 watts, which is typically the maximum you see in a portable power station. DIY custom power systems are also a better option for overlanders due to redundancy and the nature of the modular design of the system. They're also a better option if you need to be charging from your alternator and you're likely to be charging from a deep discharge situation you're definitely going to want to think about building your own system but if that's not you and that's not many people a portable power station like the grow Watt infinity 1500 is a better option it's more portable more flexible it's more cost effective and it's just basically a better solution for almost everybody all right that's it for this time guys thanks so much for watching if you're new here don't forget to subscribe give this video a thumbs up it does really help really appreciate you tuning in and until next time happy travels i know some of you are going to ask where is alaska i don't know i haven't seen her all day it's actually a little bit worrying i might go and look for her alaska 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 where are you